When was the last time you played a narrative-driven video game that gave you an engaging and exceptional experience like no other? For many people, I'd wager that highly rated titles such as The Last of Us and God of Wars would instantly spring to mind evoking fond memories in the process. These type of games offer the chance to lose oneself in what is usually a deep and engaging narrative, one that tends to take place in familiar or fantastical settings, and the opportunity to form a natural connection with what are often deep and interesting characters. But whether it's something about the gameplay or the story itself, I often find that I'm among the minority when it comes to enjoying games like The Last of Us and God of War. For example, I found the story and setting in The Last of Us to be overly familiar. Zombies had already outstayed their welcome by the time I got to the game in late 2014, and the story was hyped up to the point where it could just do no wrong. But I can certainly tell you that I've played my share of absolute bangers during my 30 plus years of gaming, with memorable moments and experiences that won't soon be forgotten. And now that I'm well and truly on my way into becoming old and crusty, and having been disappointed with what are widely regarded as some of gaming's best titles, it's not uncommon for me these days to feel a jaded mindset or a cynical outlook when looking for the next narrative-driven video game to spend my remaining Earth hours on. The question is, out of all available possibilities out there, which game does one take that chance on? I want to experience a story that's both recognisable yet completely different to anything else. I want something that takes risks and innovates its game mechanics. Something that has the ability, after all these years, to simply make me feel alive again. Enter A Plague Tale Innocence, a game that is, quite simply, an experience like no other. It is a game that has given this Tin Man the emotional draw and engagement that's been rarely felt in my gaming lifetimes. Filled to the brim with immersive historical atmosphere, an intriguing story that's both familiar and fresh, and a score so clever and beautiful that it's as much a part of the story as the narrative itself, I can quite confidently claim that despite its similarities to games of a similar structure, A Plato Innocence remains its own unique experience. Originally released in May of 2019 by French developer Azobo Studio, whose past projects range from Disney Pixar's Toy Story 3 to the 2020 version of Microsoft's Flight Simulator, A Plague Tale Innocence is a narrative-driven action-adventure stealth game that tells a heartfelt story of the importance of family and the loss of innocence. Upon its initial release, Azobo's AA game was met with positive reviews and would later go on to sell over 1 million units after its first year. The title made more than enough money to warrant a sequel which is currently in production and slated to release sometime in 2022. But with all its merits, awards, nominations and positive review scores, why aren't more people aware of this fantastic game? In this video, we're going to answer this question as we explore what exactly makes A Plato Innocence so damn special, and how it separates itself from its narrative-driven peers. And since we'll be looking almost exclusively at the game's most distinguishable accomplishments, I'll be sure then to avoid certain plot points, characters and details so as not to spoil the overall experience for the uninitiated. But please be advised, there will be some spoilers ahead. I'm sorry, but I have to talk about this game. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the immersion. This is why A Plato Innocence is an experience like no other.
mid-14th century, during both the Inquisition and the Hundred Years' War between England and France, Amicia and Hugo de Roon, two estranged siblings of French nobility, are brutally forced from their estate, when the mysterious and unwavering Lord Nicholas, captain of the French Inquisition, demands Hugo's whereabouts. He killed two of our men! Where is he? I won't ask again. Where is your son? In good hands. <laughs> With little knowledge of the current circumstance and only each other to turn to, Amicia has no choice but to guide her brother through the country, on the promise that Hugo's mysterious affliction, known as the Prima Macula, can be cured with the help of an alchemist named Laurentius. And with the added threat of the infamous Black Plague turning France's billions of rats into what are essentially piranha on legs, our two protagonists have to put themselves at greater risk to the impending English and French armies by using light as the only meaningful deterrent against these little savages. What? Huh? Some is killed! <laughs> It's horrible. With the game's main themes of family and innocence, the focus throughout the narrative is the relationship and developments between Amicia and Hugo, and how the forthcoming events shape them, from innocent children who barely know each other, to willing to do what's necessary for the sake of family. <laughs> Amicia, you you killed him. Amicia and Hugo's distinct voices are played by Charlotte McBurney and Logan Hannon, newcomers to the industry who do a beautiful job in their respective performances. Mummy says I shouldn't leave the house, you know. I know. That must be why I feel all funny. You're just tired. I miss her. At least you were allowed to see her. Hmm? Nothing. I really liked Amicia. She radiates a natural youthful glow and often ranges from playful and imaginative to desperate and empowered depending on the situation. I was constantly on Amicia's side throughout the story too. Despite the many trying circumstances, she still manages to keep her head screwed on tight for her little brother. She never bitches about a situation or acts like a spoiled brat. And there's absolutely no traces whatsoever of SJWBS with the character. She's just a regular, innocent 15-year-old girl who was forced to become a believable, empowered young woman. It's me, y your sister, Amicia. Hello. Hugo is actually cute, and I honestly can't believe the developers have created a child character I actually like. And this is coming from someone, guys, who's about as good with children as Star Trek's Captain Picard. I didn't find the character annoying at all. In fact, Hugo's typical five-year-old behaviour often had me chuckling in admiration. The developers did a great job in writing believable dialogue and mannerisms for such a young character. Let's go up the aqueduct. Hugo, it's aqueduct. Oh, aqueduct. Aqueduct. <laughs> and luckily, our two main protagonists won't be entirely alone, as the story gradually introduces a cast of friendly and interesting characters, each offering something unique to aid in the siblings' plight. Wow. Uh, do you do that a lot? No but I'm starting to like it. And I like how the supporting characters are also put to the test in their own way throughout the story. It bridges a stronger relationship between the player and the characters themselves. You really do grow to like some of these guys. The camaraderie that glues the group together is certainly present in a play tale. They interact with each other and form their own relationships outside of Amicia and Hugo. And so it's not so long before this motley crew starts to feel less like a friendly unit and more like a family one. <laughs> Thank you. 
Meet Lord Nicholas, captain of the French Inquisition and one of a Playtale's main antagonists. He follows his orders to the letter, with no qualms or compromises. His sheer persistence in the story gives enough weight for the player to consider him a serious threat. In fact, he reminded me somewhat of Resident Evil's nemesis, an unwavering threat that is constantly on your heels. Admittedly, while not the most charismatic and memorable antagonist I have come across in my time, I do appreciate how grounded in reality he is. He is a simple, stone-cold killer, with an unquestionable dedication to his commander and cause, and no amount of pesky kids, killer rats or English soldiers will sway this mysterious captain from performing his often sordid duties. While the fundamental narrative of two estranged characters growing closer together isn't exactly a new one, what a playtale does with its two characters warrants a natural change of pace from the likes of The Last of Us and God of War. But it's a playtale setting of 14th century France that truly starts to separate it from its peers. It's a period in time that hasn't largely been explored in narrative driven games before, and it's absolutely one of the biggest reasons to experience this game. I mean, can you imagine what life must have been like back then? This was a question frequently on my mind as I played through the game twice. It wasn't easy by any means, in fact a lot of us, including myself, probably wouldn't have survived past the age of 20. Something A Plague Tale does with the majority of its adolescent characters is portrayed them as young adults. In a time where war was more prevalent than peace, a common age for boys to begin training for knighthood would have been at the tender age of six years old. It was commonplace for children to grow up at a much faster rate back then, and this little detail is incorporated into the characters like Lucas, the alchemist's apprentice, who takes this craft extremely seriously, despite being just around 12 years of age. This was undoubtedly a time full of hardship, and this absolutely pours through the entirety of a play tells many locations. Get in there! Stay put and keep quiet! What's going on? No! He's my husband! He was your husband! It's all over for him now, so get lost! Not by myself! I can't leave without him! Shut up! You heard of martial law? Wanna die before he does? Oh my goodness! I'm contagious! Get out of here! Listen to him! Fuck off! Now! And with Azobo Studios' in-house graphics engine putting out some of the juiciest visuals and colour designs I've ever witnessed, the immersion one gets as a result of all these things combined is undeniable. I mean, look at it, guys. You'd have to be blind with a bad attitude to deny the beauty that's on display here. Yeah, there's the odd oversight, which took me briefly out of the game for a few seconds, but it's nothing to really complain about. The character models are fairly expressive and do a good job in conveying their emotions, but honestly, it's the in-game animations that step up the immersion even further. Simple things, like how Amicia waves her torch around while navigating the landscape, or how the characters hold on to each other to stay united against the black mass of infected rats. Even the way the characters simply press against their cover while avoiding detection, it's nothing new of course, but I just appreciate details like this. Overall, A Plague Tale Innocence just doesn't stop being pretty. Do that. They're only fucking animals. Do I look like a rat? How should I know? Well, I say we'll never get rid of these nests using stupid lime. Whatever happens, we have to get out of here before the sun goes down. They like the dark. So back to business. But what is a Playtale Innocence actually like to play? What does this title do in its gameplay that further separates itself from its peers? Well, in a nutshell, where else can you play as a 15 year old girl cracking skulls with rocks while avoiding thousands of on-screen killer rats with clever light mechanics and puzzles to engage with, all the while obtaining meaningful collectibles that both develops its characters and teaches some history and guiding your sibling through the many beautiful and deadly environments of 14th century medieval France? <sighs> Go on, have a think. There's no denying that A Playtale Innocence is largely its own game, despite being considerably influenced by Naughty Dog's The Last of Us. But what all great games do, of course, is take their inspirations and concoct a fresh new formula that makes it its own thing, and A Playtale does exactly that. The best and most obvious example of this is A Playtale's most defining mechanic. <laughs> No. The 
thousands and thousands of disease-ridden killer rats constantly nibbling at your toes, screaming their high-pitched voices and maneuvering around the environment like the truest sea of black death you're ever likely to witness. And get this, Azobo's graphics engine can output up to 5,000 on-screen killer rats at any given time. And clever use of the game's light mechanics are regularly implemented that show just how versatile and well-developed this unique mechanic is. And no matter how often you find yourself around these tiny bubonic bastards, I can almost guarantee that you'll never be sick of the sight of them. Ah, I'm gonna start with you! Why do you have no, to come please. here? please! Huh? Why? Don't make me! Playing as an adolescent with practically zero experience in combat is reflected via Amicia's limited maneuverability and single hit health. Amicia's slingshot is not only a unique mechanic, but it's in keeping with the character and the setting itself, not to mention being a breath of fresh air from using your standard firearms or melee weapons. Winding up a shot and letting loose on an enemy's cranium never seems to get old, and it's not just rocks that you use. Thanks to Lucas, the alchemist's apprentice, you have the ability to stock your sling with various lethal and distracting items, like the one that eliminates rats completely, great for reaching some of the game's hidden areas. And hiding from enemy sightlines during the stealthier moments and choosing to either distract or change cover is often just as intense. And Amicia will show her vulnerability by trembling with fear and anxiety whenever she's close to an enemy, a little detail I really liked. Guiding Hugo actually wasn't as daunting and annoying as I initially thought it would be. I can't stand escort missions in games, just because it means having to look after someone else and praying in the interim for credible AI. So I was naturally a little apprehensive about guiding this little boy throughout most of the game. But Hugo was more or less constantly by my side, being a very good boy indeed. Now despite being a mostly linear title, an aspect I welcome by the way, A Playtale Innocence offers the odd choice in varying ways, ramping up its replayability somewhat. From simply taking another route, to choosing whether or not to be merciful or unforgiving to the enemy infantry. You'll find these optional choices only a few times, and admittedly I would have liked to have seen a few more, but it's a welcome addition nonetheless that only adds some extra spice to the already satisfying gameplay. Plague Tale's Meat and Bones offers the player the chance to feel immersed and satisfied, with a unique spin on a familiar narrative and a completely different vibe in its historical setting. But it's the game's heart and soul, guys, that gives the player a far deeper engagement that cannot be ignored. No, you're here, kid. I don't have time to play games. Where have they hidden him? Stay down. A Plague Tale Innocent soundtrack is the defining reason for my wanting to make this video in the first place. Composed by Olivier de Riviere, one of modern gaming's most gifted composers, and accompanied by just five talented musicians. The music of A Plague Tale helps tell the narrative in more ways than one, both on an obvious and psychological level. A Plague Tale incorporates some of the most emotive instruments ever constructed, and aside from the effective use of the cello, these also include the nickel harper and the viola da gamba. Not only does the music help accentuate the many perilous and beautiful moments on screen at the time, but it also, and more importantly, acts as a type of progression, similarly seen in one of Olivier's most recent projects, and a game I absolutely love, Streets of Rage 4. 
To give an example of this, take a look at this segment from chapter 2, and pay close attention to the notes used when Amicia snaps out of frustrated Hugo. The same notes will be used as Amicia runs after him, but they'll progress into a more chaotic vibe reflecting Amicia's urgency, her stress, her current state of mind. What on earth are you doing? Put that mallet down! Are you stupid or what? I am not stupid! Don't shout! Children! That's enough noise! I want to see Mummy! Shut up! You're going to get us killed! Mummy will protect us! That's enough! I want to see Mummy! Mummy is dead, Hugo! You'll never see her again! Oh, Daddy! Amicia! You're... you're lying! They were killed at the house! Both of them! So shut up! I'm lying! Lying! I hate you! Please stop! Hugo, no! Hugo, wait! Don't go out! You're mad! Hugo, come back! What's he doing? Where are they? Where the hell are they? Oh no! He's going to get us killed! Hugo, please! I'm sorry! Wait! Uh, my god! Oh no! Hugo! I shouldn't have shouted! Please listen to me! No! Leave me alone! I'm sorry! Let him go! So that's where you were. No! Wait! We just want to leave! You will leave, yes? And never come back! Please, no! Ah! I, I, I didn't want to! It's an incredibly effective way to further engage you into the psyche of the character, as well as narrating the urgency of the situation itself. It's very beautiful stuff. The theme of the Inquisition is undoubtedly my favourite track in the whole game. It feels uncompromising, unwavering, emotionless even. It acts like a psychological heads up, similarly seen in The Dark Knight, in which the Joker's theme consists of an uncomfortable drawn out single note of the cello. But with this one note, it tells the viewer that the Joker's chaotic influence is nearby, if not actually on screen. Tonight you're gonna break your one rule. I'm considering it. No, there's only minutes left. You're gonna have to play my little game if you want to save one of them. Yeah. You know, for a while there, I thought you really were a dent. The way you threw yourself after her. <laughs> Look at you go! The Inquisition theme plays a similar role and just so happens to also include the use of a cello. And much like the Joker's theme, the Inquisitions will constantly evolve as the game progresses. Have they hidden him? Stay down. Hugo, it's me, Gabriel. Come here, quickly. Hey, you! What the hell are you doing? Let's Where go. Where's the kid, huh? Let's leave him alone. Shut your mouth. He belongs to the Inquisition. But he's just a child. You've lost your mind. You should have handed over the child. Get it's really not hard. Oh, no. Leia. I don't know anything. There you go. That'll teach you. No. I'm begging you. Hugo's not here. And you, stay here. Come on. Very clear. Tell me, where is Hugo the Rune? Oh my god. Louise. You think it's funny making me run like that? Coming. 
I've been listening to a Playtales music non-stop for the past few months now, pretty much ever since I started playing the game. And I'm still just as engaged by it, guys. And a lot of what I felt during the game was actually confirmed and addressed by the Riviera himself in this video right here. If you've not watched it, and chances are you haven't, because it's only got around four or five thousand views, I've provided a link in the description. Please go and check it out. It's very insightful. The music of Innocence has done something to me I can't remember another game ever doing before, and that's made me feel a deep sense of ambivalence. It has tugged me in all different directions, and has been one of the most memorable experiences in my gaming lifetimes. But it's also because of a Playtale's art direction, what I found to be the game's heart, that helps bring that ambivalence to life. Oh my god. Are they all... dead? We can't carry on. Amicia, we have to follow the Aqueduct. Did you ever see the film, What Dreams May Come? It's a story about a man who steps into his deceased wife's paintings and is confronted by a cornucopia of conflicting emotions during the film. It's really good. Well, much like the film, A Plato Innocence has a very similar effect in its art direction. You are constantly surrounded by something beautiful, even if the scene itself has an element of tragedy to it. When you look at scenes like this, especially once already immersed within the game, coupled with Olivier's music, how can you not feel the beauty of the moment, but also the tragedy of the situation? Do you think we are hurting men? Just keep moving, Hugo. Come on. And with the exceptional lighting effects from the many torches scattered around the environments, for example, it really does feel like you're often walking through a beautifully crafted painting, a painting evidently created with care and intents, one that fills you with ambivalence. Scenes like this really struck a chord with me. A Playtale's art direction regularly halted my advances just so I could take it all in. Everything seems to come full circle with the Playtale. Its music complements the narrative, the narrative complements the gameplay, the gameplay complements the setting, and the setting complements the music. The title has its issues, it's not a perfect game by any means, but I wanted to save these for another potential Playtale review video, so if you'd like to see that, you can let me know through the usual methods. But despite its few faults, a Playtale Innocence provided a level of immersion and engagement I'd never felt before, and because of that, has charmingly wormed its way into my top favourite games of all time, and guys, that ain't an easy thing to do. But with all this being said, we've still yet to answer the question I posed at the beginning of the video. Why haven't more people played a Plato Innocence? If you check out a lot of videos online, you'll often find low numbers and views. And if you look for online groups, you won't find many members. Upon its initial release, a Plato Innocence had to compete with these well-established titles, which for some have accumulated millions and millions of players over the course of multiple decades. The game immediately became the underdog and because of this has accumulated a smaller but just as passionate following. But I think awareness is growing, a Playtale Requiem is coming soon and it will take Amicia and Hugo to new locations and will surely be filled with larger and more expansive environments. Whatever happens in Requiem, I hope it encourages more awareness for Innocence. If you haven't yet played it, please give it a chance, it's a truly beautiful game. And share this video with someone you think will enjoy a Playtale Innocence, you just might help give them an experience like no other.